you're watching Power Nation. Today on Carcass, our DJ5 Jeep has made a drastic change from its days delivering the mail with a four-link suspension and coil-over shocks. We take it another step further with new gears and lockers for our one-ton axles to help us conquer the trails. Plus, get the drivetrain in and mounted. Then we'll tackle our steering to get junk mail rolling once again. Hey guys, welcome to Carcass. Our 1978 Jeep DJ5 has made quite a big transformation from the two-wheel drive ex-postal Jeep that it was into this four-wheel drive, fully functional off-road rig. And we've done a ton of work so far. With our Jeep in the shop, we stripped it down all the way to the bare chassis and removed all of the old suspension brackets. Then we went to a junkyard and picked up a set of one-ton axles from a Ford Super Duty. We cleaned those up added a set of axle trusses, and then we threw them under the Jeep so we could fabricate our custom four-link suspension. So the plan today is to build the complete front and rear axle and set the drivetrain in the chassis. We also want to put the body on it to make this thing a roller, so the first thing we have to do is get the axles back out from under it. Now we're building our Jeep on a budget. That's why we're spending the money where we want to and saving the money where we can. That's also why we built our own four-link suspension and went out and got a set of junkyard axles. Well, to build out those axles, we went to summitracing.com and picked up a whole bunch of good parts. And that starts with Richmond Gear 488 ring and pinion gears. Now these are a huge upgrade over our original setup. These get bolted to a Yukon Grizzly fully mechanical locker. Now this provides 100% power to our tires when we need it. We also picked up a set of stock replacement 35 spline axle shafts. Now we don't know how many miles are on our original axle shafts, but they'll be a good backup set for when we're out on the trails. We also got a set of mile marker premium locking hubs and a Summit Racing aluminum diff cover. Now all these parts should make our Dana 60 pretty much bulletproof. The first thing I gotta do to get this whole build started is put the ring gear on our locker. With our ring gear on, we can add a few bolts to hold it in place. We'll add a little thread locker to the rest of the fasteners and tighten them down. Finally, we can torque them down to 110 pound-feet. With our ring gear on our carrier and torqued down, the next step is to install the races for the pinion bearings. Then I'll go ahead and install the pinion, drop the carrier in, and we'll start taking some measurements. We'll give it a few whacks with our hammer, and we should be good. That seated. With our axle flipped over, we'll knock in the race for our inner bearing. Now that our races are installed, it's time to set up our pinion. We're using some setup bearings. Now these bearings are made to slide on and off our pinion shaft without using a press. The reason why we're doing that is there's a shim down here at the bottom that sets our pinion depth. Now you can either buy or make these and we just chose to make ours out of our old set. Now to get started, all I gotta do is slide these on and check our pinion. With our pinion in, we can now check our backlash. I already installed some setup bearings and some shims on the carrier. So now all I gotta do is drop this in and see how close we are. Jimmy, can you uh, give me a hand here? Yeah, let's do it. Nice and easy, I like my fingers. I'm gonna let go now. Now we'll just set our bearing caps in place and making sure that we line up our reference marks and then I'll just snug them down. Now with everything snugged up, we can check our backlash. It shows about 11, which is pretty close. I think we can move forward from here. Well, now that everything checks out, we can disassemble the case, pull out our pinion, and press on our real bearings. Once disassembled, we'll head over to the press, add our new bearings to the pinion, and then reinstall it in our axle. All right, that should do it. We'll 
check the preload. And that looks pretty good. Now that we have our pinion bearings in place, we can add our new bearings to our diff. The press makes quick work of this and we're ready to install it back in our axle. We'll snug down our caps and then torque them down. That is exactly 10. To check our contact pattern, we'll add a little gear marking compound to the ring gear and give it a few turns. Yep, yeah, that right there, that's a good pattern. Then we'll slap on a fresh gasket, bolt on our new diff cover, and slide in our new axles that we got from Summit Racing. With our axles in, now we can start working on our hubs. And our old bearings were worn out, so we went to AutoZone and picked up a set of Duralast hub assemblies. Duralast has a full line of steering, drivetrain, and chassis parts, all of which are designed, manufactured, and tested to meet or exceed OEM specifications. These wheel bearing assemblies eliminate noise with lubricated, maintenance-free bearings and come with a two-year warranty. And to wrap up our hub assembly, we'll install a set of manual lockouts. With our front axle pretty much wrapped up, now I gotta transfer over to the rear, finish that one up too. We have to make some quick adjustments and fabricate some brackets. Then we can mount our drivetrain in our chassis. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we got our axles pretty much buttoned up, but before we can slide them underneath the chassis, we got one more thing that we want to take care of here on the front end. We're going to be doing a brake system upgrade using EBC brake pads and their rotors. For our rotors, we're going with their GD Sport Series. They have wide slots that draw in cool air between their brake pad and rotor surface, and that keeps temps down. They have a thermic black coating to help with corrosion, and another advantage is their ability to maintain a flat pad surface throughout the lifetime of their brake pad setup. Speaking of brake pads, we're also going to be using their yellow stuff pads. Now these have a high friction formula that helps improve braking by up to 30%. They're available for light truck, Jeep, and SUVs. And now all I gotta do is set these on our front axle, and then we can slide those underneath our Jeep. While we're freshening up our brake system, we went to rockauto.com and got a new set of caliper mounting brackets and calipers to go along with our new EBC brake pads and rotors. With our axles all buttoned up and slid underneath our chassis, we went ahead and dropped in the engine and the transmission, but we're running into a little bit of an issue. I was going to put in one of the upper four-link bars, and it's already hitting the starter without the suspension even being cycled. So this is a great example of why you mock things up, because you can always go back and change them later. And by changing the position of the upper link mount, well, that's going to change the geometry of our suspension. But this is just one of those instances where we're going to have to change some stuff to make everything work out. So the first thing we got to do is just cut out the mounts. We'll use a cutoff wheel to make quick work of our tacks. Now that we have our brackets cut out, I found a pretty simple solution. All we're going to do is tilt the bracket down a little bit. That way we get the vertical clearance on the starter and our links won't change the length that much. Now all we got to do is tack this back in, hook up our links and cycle the suspension. All right, I think that's gonna work. With our suspension dialed in now, we can finally move on to mounting the engine. And if you guys remember, we had to take a cross member out of here, so we have to make some standalone engine mounts. And Jeremy actually had a pretty good idea on how to do that. The motor mounts that bolted to our six cylinder engine were two different styles. On the driver's side, it went away from the oil pan, but on the passenger side, it actually went underneath the oil pan, and that's not gonna work for us because of our suspension. But there was a solution to this. I went out to our parts Jeeps and I grabbed another driver's side motor mount. So now I have two motor mounts that bolt directly to our engine and go away from the oil pan. 
I also went to Summit Racing and picked up some polyurethane mounts. So now what I gotta do is assemble these, put them on the engine, and then we'll start working on the chassis side. All right, Jimmy, we're all set. Awesome. With the mounts on the engine, it's now time to focus on the chassis side of things, so I'll take a couple measurements so we can cut them out on the CNC plasma table. Yeah, we'll call that three quarter. Chassis is about four and a half tall. Once we have our measurements, we can start cutting out our new engine mounts on our Premier plasma table. Then we'll add a couple quick tacks and mount them onto our chassis. With the engine mounts tacked in, it's time to move on to our transmission cross member. Now we already know from taking a couple measurements that the transmission won't sit directly in between the frame rails with the transfer case attached but there's a simple solution to this. What we're gonna do is actually clock our transfer case down about 13 degrees, and that's gonna help with two different things. That will allow us to center our transmission, and it's actually gonna help with our front drive shaft angle. Now they do make a tool to do this, it's called a clocking ring. You guys can go out and buy these, but since we have a plasma table, we took a couple measurements and made up our own. So what I have to do now is bolt this to the back of the transmission, punch out, drill out a series of holes, We'll bolt up the transfer case, center our transmission, and then we can get on to building that cross member. Here we go. You got the heavy end now. You gotta make sure to go in the holes. There we go. Oh, that slid right in there. All right, how's it over there? Perfect. We gained at least two inches of clearance, so we're pretty right, good cool. on this side. Yeah, all right, now um, I'm gonna start making the trans cross member, but we'll actually take this back out and I'll take some measurements and cut it out. Right, you'll go around obviously the drive shaft on this side? Yeah. Perfect, yeah. let's get it out of here. You wanna bring it my way? Yeah. And then I'll go put it on the table. It's about eight. With our measurements, we can start cutting out our transmission mount then start piecing it together on our welding table. All right, this thing looks like it fits perfectly, so all I gotta do now is finish weld it, and then we can move on to the transfer case. Coming up, we'll tackle our steering and get junk mail ready to roll. Now we're making really good headway on the drivetrain installer project junk mail and it's time to move on to the transfer case. Now we're running a 32RH transmission, but we opted to go with the 241 Rubicon series transfer case. Now these two bolt up, but they don't seal up, but we do have a solution. Went to Summit Racing and picked up a TerraFlex seal extension. So all I have to do is pop out the old seal, pop in this new extension piece, we'll throw the transfer case on, and then we're moving up front to work on some steering. All right, well the transfer case is in, now let's move on to the steering. For our steering system, we're going with the PSC Hydro Assist setup that we got from Summit Racing. This kit includes everything from the steering box, the reservoir, the pump, the hydraulic ram, and all the fittings and hoses needed to complete the kit. On our Jeep, we're going with crossover steering and 37 inch tall tires, and this kit is designed to handle the higher steering forces. And even if we went with a bigger tire, this kit would still handle it no problem. So the first thing we're gonna do is mount this pump, then move on to the rest of the steering. We'll mount up our pump using a bracket I fabricated on the plasma table. Then I'll take a few measurements. Five and five eighths make a few marks on our frame, and then drill some holes so we can install our steering box. All 
I've got our steering gearbox in its final resting place, but there's a few reinforcements I want to do to make it stronger. In the meantime, we can move on to some other components and finish up our steering. The next step in the process is our tie rod bar. Now I've already taken a couple measurements, so I know the length of tube that I need to cut. And then from here, we'll head over to the bench and I'll weld in a couple tube inserts. And then we'll keep moving on our steering. With our tube cut, I want to make a few bends so that our tie rod bar will clear our new diff cover. Wet a 20 degree bend to each end of our steering linkage to help with clearance. That should work. We'll hold it all together with the TIG. All right, let's see it. Yeah, you take that side. I'll wait for you to get yours before I start mine. Is that it? We'll just hand tighten this for now. Let's cycle this once and see how much room we have on the diff cover. Yeah, plenty. Yeah, that should work good. Nicely done. Let me get the cylinder and we'll get that on here too. Sounds good. Can you hold this while I tack it? Yeah, you know where you're gonna put it? Just as far over to the passenger side as I can just to avoid the pumpkin over there. Yeah. That'll work. All right, ready? Yep. We made sure our toe angle was relatively close before burning it in. With the cylinder installed, we can finally add some hoses and finish plumbing up the system. Then we can set the body back on the chassis and see what this thing looks like. We'll have to make a few more body mods before we get junk mail rolling. We're making really good headway on Project Junk Mail. We pretty much buttoned up the suspension, we threw in the drivetrain, bolted our shocks back up, and we even mounted a set of wheels and tires. But before we final weld all the suspension, we want to throw the body on it to do some final checks. And we do know we're going to have to cut some holes in it so we can clear the rear shock hoops. And the easiest way to do that is to roll this thing over to the lift and see what we're working with. Turn a little bit here. Oh, it's hard to tell where we're it's at. It's pretty close. Yeah, let's grab some plumb bobs and we'll drop them down from the rear mounts and see how close we are. Tires off the ground. That's probably enough. That's probably good. Yep. That's a nice piece right there. Okay, I'm gonna go down slow. You let me know when we get close because the hoist arm's gonna block me, so. Mm. Stop right there. Yeah, that's good. We'll mark out the area that needs to be removed. Our lines don't have to be super precise, just straight enough to give us a guide. Yeah. Something, something like that. We're using cutoff wheels for our application, but you could use a plasma cutter as well. Either way makes quick work of our floor. We'll yank off the wheels and tires and remove our shocks so we can lower the body down onto our chassis. Full speed, see what happens. Keep going. Stop. Like that. We look close. How's it look inside? It looks nice. Yeah, I think we should be able to get the shocks in there. Yeah, that totally fits. I think the shocks will fit. We'll throw in some new body mounts and drop our shocks back in before setting the body back down. Here we go. A lot of room between the firewall and valve cover. All right, I'm down on the back. Hoist arms are coming off. Getting close. Keep going? Yeah. 
How are you looking? Transfer case is clear and everything. Yeah. Oh, cool. We're off on the front. How much room do we have between the firewall? Uh, inch. Oh, yeah. There's some wiring there, but we're good. Let's get the front clip on it then. Yeah. Get fenders in the grill shell. Make it look like a Jeep again. Yeah. That's a good idea. I'll go grab them. All right, let's see how these fenders fit. Had a pretty good idea that we were gonna have to do some trimming here. So I think if we just cut out this indent right here on the inner fender, that should allow the fender to slide in and match up with the grill shell. To cut out our fender, I'll use a cutoff wheel. It makes it easy to follow the desired shape we're looking for to make room for our shocks. Jim, you wanna grab the back side and bolt that in. That should be good for now. This thing's looking so good and the parts are really coming together. Yeah, but now we got the big order of tearing this thing all back apart because we still have to finish weld the chassis. We want to paint the stuff underneath. We got to get inside and there's a laundry list of stuff to do before we go wheeling. Yeah, so. well that's for another day. If you guys saw anything you liked on the show, go to PowerNationTV.com. Falling in love with this thing more and more. It's awesome.